Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is another exciting, busy, busy week here in the local market. And really, what week is it? We've got so much stuff going on. We've got a customer in the Bolingbrook Naperville area that's been bitten by the water gardening bug. That's right, this is his third on in three years. Chris Hansen is out with our good buddy, Rusty Reed. They're doing an epic swim pond. I can't wait to take you through the progression of this week. It's gonna be fun. Hang on tight, here we go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. What is up, everybody? It is Chris from Team Aquascape. We are in Churubusco, Indiana, Turtle Town, USA, with the turtle man himself here at Blackwater Turtle Refuge, Rusty Reed. In this episode, we are going to be creating a rec pond as part of a regional event. This is a training event for certified aquascape contractors along with aspiring certified aquascape contractors alike. The rec pond that we are building out here at Rusty's Farm is what we are seeing a lot of our contractors get leads for. It's kind of in that 25 to 35 foot range by about the same width and dimension. This is gonna have all the bells and whistles on it necessary for a recreational pond. We've got a wetland filter, an intake bay, circulation jets, a deep section. We have a lot of stuff going in to this area. It's not one of those huge recreational ponds that you've seen, such as Greg's old pond at Aquaterra or even at Aquascape itself. So what to expect in this video, we have about 35 to 40 contractors coming out to learn, but also to help us build this incredible recreation style pond here at Rusty's Farm. They're gonna be arriving anytime and we are just kind of getting the site ready to go. So let's get rolling. So we are just getting started out here at Rusty Reed's house, the farm, the Blackwater Turtle Refuge that we are building a recreation style pond where we are hosting a Midwest regional event to teach contractors on how the installation process of a recreation pond as well as best practices and construction techniques go. So the customers came in last night, we had a nice little dinner, networking, I think people played some cornhole, nice little fun time just to get to know everybody. But today is when we're really gonna get to know each other and start sweating together and getting this rec pond done. So we have a lot of work head cut out for us today and contractors should be here any moment so we've got the rest of the aquascape teammates here we of course have chris wilson one of our most seasoned trainers he's excellent in these kind of events but the cool thing about this too is these are also his people this is his sales territory so it's really really neat to see him connect and bond with the people that he's brought into the fold so that's really cool so we are going to be doing a lot of work kind of splitting up in groups working with these guys and girls and really knocking this rec pond out of the park good morning everybody good morning. Good morning. thanks for showing up appreciate you we're going to need all the help and energy that we can get to Today. I just want to thank you again for taking time out of your businesses in the field and in the daily grind to come out and play with us but also hopefully learn a few things but teach your fellow other contractors to really connect with your brethren and, and bond and all that kind of stuff. Um, you might come up here. All right, come on in. All right, so I'm standing on top of the wetland filter for this project. We have 24 small aqua blocks. It's basically a big rectangle, about 10 by 10, 10 by 12 foot area. We've already went ahead and rocked over the top of the aqua blocks with our different layers of different sized gravel and rocks. One thing I wanted to point out is we have an enormous amount of liner left over all the way around the perimeter. What that allows us to do is that really allows us to manipulate the shape and prevent it from looking man-made and have this big rectangle filter. So we're gonna end up bringing this liner back over over the top of the gravel and really making this a nice, beautiful, organic shape on top of this wetland filter. 
are out here at Rusty Reed's personal farm, the Blackwater Turtle Refuge. He is conducting a lifelong study on alligator snapping turtles, and that's really what bonded he and Greg together. Greg loving turtles, Rusty loving turtles, and what's cooler than giving the gift that we all love, and that's water features to somebody that can really appreciate it. So that's really what brings us here to Rusty's farm. So Rusty, why don't you just take it away, man? Well, I'm so grateful for all these people that poured themselves into this project because it means so much to us as we continue to work to build the filming grounds where we are teaching people about the most amazing creature that I find in my life is the alligator snapping turtle. So many years ago, I focused in on the alligator snapping turtle because it was my personal fascination. Mm -hmm. And to meet up with Greg three years ago and find another guy that was passionate about turtles and learn so much about the aquascape system. Yep. We're bringing the koi into this pond so that it will relieve an old pond that we have and make it available for alligator snapping turtles to house outdoors in a greenhouse that we already have built over that pond. Yeah. So in the fall, we put a greenhouse over that pond because it's kind of a shallow. It was a natural fit for the alligator snapping turtles to go mm. in that pond, but we mm -hmm. had to move the koi. Right. There's been koi in there for 35 years and this should be a pretty good home for some koi. Let's hope so, right? We talked about really changing the shape of this rectangular wetland and making it look very organic. So we've already went ahead and placed the boulders inside and on top of the wetland. Now we're just simply bringing that underlayment, liner and everything, folding it back on top of the wetland. So we'll bring the fabric down. Then you see we have plenty of liner left over. This liner will come over the top of this fabric, come up the backside of our rock. We backfill and completely disguise the shape of this big rectangle hole that was in the ground. surprise for you. You'll never guess who showed up. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you What's checking up? up on us? <laughs> never, never, oh never. God. It was fun being out here at the very beginning on some of the prep. You guys killing it. Looks phenomenal. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. You went out and picked out some of that rock with Rusty. I think made all the difference in the world. Dropping some of those big guys in here, it was really a critical piece, I think. Yeah. That was a good move. Well, I think we kind of channeled our inner pond professor, <laughs> and we were like, well, this isn't gonna work, right? So we adapt and overcome, and yeah, we really just, I mean, obviously we want to make Rusty proud, but we know we, we want to make you proud as well, man, so. I'm glad you're here. I know everybody else is probably more stoked that you're here than actually crit because they don't get to see you as nearly as regularly as right, we do right. but yeah dude we the gang we have oh. high energy they're doers they're getting stuff done i mean it's you saw it right it's so. incredible yeah no it's moving really really fast incredible teams of people wayne showed up with the other piece of equipment there so two excavators two separate teams setting and then people doing all that little finish work yeah it's like a well well oiled machine right now it's awesome love it <laughs> all right so a quick little pro tip when rocking some of these recreation style ponds when you're going very deep, very quick. It's important to have the correct boulders for the job. So on this project, we ended up using a lot of these very tall vertical pieces. Very, very thin though, because we are going about five feet deep on this pond from here all the way down to the bottom of the gravel. And we only have about two feet of width to build up that entire wall. In order to do that, we ended up standing up a lot of these very tall vertical thin pieces. But when you do that, you need to have what we call a kickstand 
rocks, supporting them, holding them in place. So it's a lot of staircasing back and forth, going out in front, understanding the thickness of the rocks, using gravel to backfill to make sure everything is structural. And that foundation for these tall vertical rocks is strong so they're not gonna tip over when they're being recreated. All right, we're out here at Mike's house. Mike has truly been bitten by the water gardening bug. Chris and I came out here a few years ago. You can check out the link below to see the construction of this one. And it is maturing fantastic. I love the hostas. It is about as a wooded setting as you can possibly get. And look at how great this looks. Like everybody thinks a pond or a water feature has to be in full sun. Well, it sure doesn't. This looks amazing. It just looks so, so good. And last year they had us add this on. And believe it or not, it's two separate systems. We just backed them right up to each other. So this has a spillway here that goes down to a pondless fall. This has a spillway up there, which comes down to a pondless system. And we're gonna add it now another system. Now you think it's crazy because we have three separate systems, but because each system has a small amount of aqua blocks down in them, I could never make this stream all one big length unless I ripped out the entire reservoir. And we just didn't want to get into that. This one's kind of the same way. The other thing I can't do is I can't split a stream at the top and bring it here without bringing it all the way back over there. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring in a spillway right up over in here. In this area, it's going to come down to a neat little waterfall. It's going to be fun. Hang on tight. Here we go. So understanding light placement is really crucial when lighting a pond. What you wanna always take into consideration are the viewing areas. And when you understand where the viewing areas are, you wanna make sure that you are pointing the lights away from the viewing area versus back at the patios or the gathering spaces, right? So all of the lights that we have in this pond currently are focusing away from where the main gathering spaces are, the gazebo, the walkway, the patios, all that stuff. They're all gonna shoot out across the pond, illuminating the pond. It's important to have them relatively shallow in the pond so that you can really capitalize on that light in the feature itself. I hope that covers it. Enjoy the day. Rusty, I gotta tell you, man, I think we gotta cross all of our fingers, but I almost don't wanna say, but I'm going to. I think we're ahead of schedule. Wow. Um, I hope so. Water's here in 20 minutes. So. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, well, we were we're ahead we were ahead of schedule. 20 minutes. Dude, this is, I mean, amazing, right? It is incredible. It's moving to watch this take place. Uh, it's incredible. I mean, what you guys can do in such a short time with all this orchestrated teamwork. Yeah. It's mind blowing to see you guys in action, man. Water is here. We've got a 6,000 gallon tanker right behind us with one following it. Finally have water.
love the way this is coming out. It's super simple, but it's kind of complex just because of the twists, the turns, the granite boulders, fitting it in a tight space. You see me just looking down at it as I'm talking. But the one part I did want to show you is how we were trying to match up the water level of the upper pool with the pool behind it. So I'm going to flip this around, show you just exactly what we're talking about. Oh, the man with the level. You should be like a statue. Thanks. Right? <laughs> like we could have like a whole shrine of you <laughs> at Aquascape, you know, just standing with a level type thing. So Jack, come down with me. Okay. Come down. There we go. So we've got this waterfall rock right here. And when we look past you and we see that upper pool, it definitely looks like we could probably get another waterfall in there. And the two of us wanted to see another spill. But when we check the water level here on this rock, show them how high the water level actually comes up in there. So that's level, right? Yep. If you follow the bottom of that level, it goes halfway up that rock. Now water's probably going to pool up at least a half an inch higher than that, which then only leaves our edges about two and a half inches higher than that. So really trying to get another waterfall in here, what we decided was the work and effort of a two inch waterfall and opportunity for leaks and everything else was going to look ridiculous. In fact, setting the water level of this pool a couple inches lower than that one, it gives it the illusion that this actually flows down through here. If the biggest mistake we could have made was having a waterfall higher than that pool back over there, really making this look super artificial. So I think we did the right thing, but we won't know until we turn it on, I guess. Yeah, who knows? When should we do that? I'd say in all, in all five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Let's give us ourselves two hours. Yeah, two I'd hour. say it's tomorrow. About an hour, hour, hour and a half. I think we got this thing up and running. Yeah. All right, pumps in, running the plumbing, bringing it back up over there. We've got this whole area done. We're going to bib liner this so when it drops out of this, it kind of twists over into here. This waterfall is going to be super interesting because I think most of it's going to come off of it that way, but we're definitely going to get something that goes this way and then back this way, which will be fun, and then some coming kind of down that crack. So this waterfall here will have a lot going on for one little spill stone and give us all of our sound. This one's pretty simple, but a big impact and everything still visible from up there in the kitchen window. Well, that says it all. This project turned out absolutely incredible. And I think it's only fair, while you guys have been following along on this project, to now finally give you a walkthrough of the overall design. You've seen the construction methods, that kind of stuff, but now we can actually break it down and just kind of talk completely through the system. So Chris and I are both up here in the waterfall wetland filter area. This is the biological system, right? This is the kidneys. This is the kidneys of the system, right? This is filtering out all of the, you know, mother nature's gonna, you know, she's gonna rain, she's gonna get a little bit of stuff in here algae is going to start growing which is a good thing we don't want it growing out of control but this biological filter that we call the biofall 6000 up here this wetland filter that i'm actually standing on right here this is filtering your system to give you that crystal clear water here so this is a natural ecosystem meant to swim in right and yep. get in engage in uh so we got to make sure we filter out all the mixing and stuff that we're going to be doing and having fun in there the placement of the biofalls the height of it everything that we did when building this area out really came together quite nicely and you brought up the audible energy focusing back towards the house and this is one thing that I was showing a couple of the contractors last night is I don't know if the camera can pick this up but hear how the audio difference in the waterfall just by simply placing its own you get more of that bassy by manipulating that water to come off of that rock a little bit differently. The depth of the water that that waterfall is falling into, you can really manipulate the sound going back to the ear of the person wanting to enjoy it. This is that area where all that water is now coming out into the main channel. We kind of dammed this up. They wanted to have it be a little bit more bird loving. So you can see none of this is foamed together in through here, but water's just quickly cresting over these rocks, kind of working its way through, just helping push it, the debris and stuff back out into the main channel. And then you get into the 
good pond, man. This is a five foot deep pond. It's a recreation style pond. So we want people to get in there and just enjoy it, right? Chris brought up a great point of having rocks at different levels too, because somebody might not want to sit in there all the way up to their chin the way we were. But as hard as we worked yesterday, as hot as it was, it felt great. But you may want to just have some of these flat rocks to dangle just your feet in, yeah. which is also why I love this section over here. I mean, yeah. that was one of those game day decisions that we came up with. Like, how do we get the water as close to that patio as we could? And what's neat about it too is coming over here to this flat side of the stone, we have all this rock and gravel back behind. So it allows us to plant inside the liner that'll have wet feet yeah. and then really soften this area up. But then you see the circulation jets, right? Because of the way the water comes across, it's gonna wanna shoot straight over into our intake base. So we need to have some kind of circulation jet system pushing that water away from this wall. The other thing is it breaks up that sheet water, right? So it will help with predation from predatory birds and that kind of stuff just by breaking up the surface and agitating the water. It makes it that much more difficult for egrets, herons, and predators alike to go down and snipe those fish because they can't see them. Yep, yep. So almost like an invisible fish net. Now just kind of working our way over to the intake bay, man. It's working. It sure is. I mean, look, look at all the stuff that's just kind of swirling in here. And I think that's what's cool about it. It's like a skimmer on steroids, right? Yeah. It also looks a lot more natural. Yeah. You did like an awesome job of keeping that deep water, shallowing it up to increase velocity and then getting back down here where you actually have even a destination boulder, right? Going from a little bit shallower as it comes through that channel and then it has the opportunity to get a little bit lower because of that deeper water. And because it's so deep, you're not raking the bottom of that net and destroying your net trying to rake over rock and gravel, right? And then the great thing with a skimming cove or an intake bay is we can play around by even adding like a berm of cobbles if we want to speed this up. But it looks like it's working just awesome, right? Yep. Coming down and across, you could see everything kind of flying in yep. here. I think we want it done. I think the other part of the thought process that is clearly evident in obviously knowing Chris, but also seeing what he did here was the consideration again into those natural elements. Stumps and driftwood pieces are so seamlessly intertwined with the rock work, making it look so natural and not man-made, right? We don't want to see the products and you carried that theme from what we did in the wetland filter over into here and it just looks so awesome. These these log jams that use this oak log as yep. to, to finish this whole back edge and that's a seven, eight foot log, oak log that's not gonna break down but it just finished that entire edge and really made it like you just disguised everything so freaking well. Yep. It looks awesome. I'll say it, or I've said it, I will say it again, what an amazing event. We had just an amazing group of certified aquascape contractors as well as aspiring certified aquascape contractors on this regional event. Many hands definitely made light work of this beautiful project. Of course, it all goes into the prep work, but then the successful completion and pulling off an event like this, I can't say enough good things about my teammates. They did a great job putting on this event. Really, Chris Wilson and I got to do the fun stuff and as well as that, and get in the hole and play with these guys and girls that came and helped us create this magical destination for Rusty and Maryland. Getting together with a group like this and witnessing something like this and that poetry in motion, I know that's not my phrase, but it really is poetry in motion. And watching that happen is life changing for everybody that gets involved. All these contractors that are involved in working with one another and so many people just knew what to do. And the details that I see some of those people obsessed over, they don't just place moss on a rock, they roll the edges of the moss on the rock. Mm -hmm and the details and the love that they all have for what they do is just humbling to me to watch wow. people that love what they do. Well, it's evident that you love what you do and what you're doing here at Blackwater Turtle Refuge. And it's just, I tell you what, man, it's such an honor being able to work for you in Maryland and being able to obviously host an event here and educate and hopefully bring other people up through building water features and aquascape ecosystem ponds, but just really a pleasure to be able to, and an honor to work for you. So, oh, um, and give that, you guys this gift. So. I love my pond. I love my pond. I, I don't know what all I love. There's no favorite part about it. It really is life changing to, to watch that happen and then to live with it afterwards. Meryl and I couldn't be more pleased with every inch of this pond bill. It's nothing like it. To go in and create a space like this where there was nothing but grass, it, it's mind numbing. It's yeah. mind blowing yep. to, to see it happen. And I remember last night when we were all soaking in the pond, enjoying the moment, hitting our high of the day or, mm -hmm. or release 
beef of the day, whatever it was, somebody said, I think I said, it's not just about ponds. And he said, it's not about ponds at all. Mm -mm, it's bizarre. Well, yeah. it, it's a space now for you, your family, your friends to come enjoy and just be a part of nature yep. along with it. So buddy, thank you. Thank you so oh, much, man. Appreciate you. I love you guys. Love you too, man. I love, I love what you're doing. And, and hopefully you guys love this episode. Turtle Town, USA, man. <laughs> So thank that you so you much right. again. All right, see ya. See another one down. Another one goes down in the book. That was a long, long week, but what an epic week. Like, I just love, 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 love building projects for people that appreciate it that much. And what can you say about Rusty Reeds? I mean, Chris and those guys just killed it out there. That whole team of contractors just did an epic, epic job. So shout out to you guys. Knocked it out of the park. Wish I could have been there with you because it looked like it was so much fun. Speaking of fun, somebody next week is going to have a ton of fun. That somebody is Jack Pazinski, our foreman here at Aquascape. We're going to send Jack back to Shaquille O'Neal's house. Brian? I did it! Oh, it's going to be an epic process for him. I'm hoping he goes there with his eyes wide open, learning as much as he can from some of the best and most talented artists I've ever met. Yes, we're going to have Artist of the Year out there with Shaq. Jack's going out there to give him a hand. We built him an unbelievable pond a few years ago, and I know the pond we're going to build this time is even going to be more unbelievable. So you guys, make sure you tune in next week where we're back out at Shaquille O'Neal's house, and of course, we'll have some other stuff going on because one project a week is never enough. All right, guys you know what to do like comment subscribe and we'll see you next week bye